back to Kansas Speedway. Trucks on their warm-up lap. We're excited for tonight. It's the third race of round one of the Craftsman Truck Series playoffs. Let's take a look at our Craftsman Truck Series starting lineup. How did we get here? We mentioned Chase Purdy on the pole for the first time in his career. 71st start today was a big day for him. And Phil talked about Nick Sanchez, just qualifying machine right up front. Jack Wood touched on him. Ty Majeski, watch this truck. He was so fast in practice. Jake Garcia, another great story, Phil. There's so many good stories in the truck series. Ben Rhodes was really fast in practice, had the best average of everybody. What about Haley Deegan, top 10 starting position there alongside Christian Eckes? What do you say we try the radio, see if we can talk to Matt Crafton. Matt's got it stacked up against him right now, starting in the back. Hit him up, Phil. Hey, Matt Crafton, Waltrip, and the Fox team, do you copy? Yes, sir, loud and clear. Well, buddy, we were texting earlier today, and you said it's go or go home. You know what's ahead of you. How do you attack this race knowing that you're in a backup truck starting in the back? I've been told by a pretty wise guy before, uh, just go where they're not. So uh, you're going to see this bright yellow truck just going where they're not all night tonight and just giving it hell. Well, I want to tell you, it was beautiful to watch you go where they weren't where they weren't in Milwaukee. You just took some unique lines, and this track offers up so many opportunities to run all over the track. So I know you're looking forward to tonight. Yeah, it's been a good place to us, and hopefully it's going to be a real good place to us tonight and really hurt some people's feelings. Ooh, I love your attitude, buddy. <laughs> Go get them. We'll talk to you later. Hurt some people's feelings. Well, they've come alive in the playoffs the last couple of weeks, so keep your eye on the 88. As I said, he's never missed the playoffs. I talked to Matt about this track and about how you could run all over it. Let's look at the details of the Kansas Speedway and why it's so unique. It's a mile and a half in length, but look at the corners. The banking is progressive. Down low, it's 17 degrees. Up top, it's 20 degrees. The front and back straightaways, that's irrelevant. But you can see this track offers up drivers a place to run that the others aren't. And when I say that, also, the older pavement, this track hadn't been paved in quite a few years, that offers up the trucks to slip and slide, and these guys will be taking advantage of that. Let's take a look at our race analysis. This race is 134 laps, just over 200 miles. Our stages are 30-30 in the final stage, 74. Pit window somewhere between 50 and 55 laps. That means we will have a pit stop in that final stage, and it's going to be fun to watch. It will be, especially from our onboards. We have two onboards this evening to keep an eye on. All right, I'm going to break some news, Jamie. This is my favorite to win the race tonight. I liked his speed in practice. I love his attitude. Louisville, Kentucky's Ben Rhodes is going to start inside the top 10. Really fast truck on the long run. Watch for this truck, the Kubota Ford, to go forward. Ben is just below that cut line. Let's, we're going to ride along with a guy that's just above that cut line. This is the Gamebridge Chevrolet for Nick Sanchez, an outstanding rookie season. Remember how good he was at Texas on the mile and a half? He's going to start from the second spot, and he finished second at Atlanta earlier this year. With more on Nick Sanchez, here's Heather. And some may call him Mr. Front Row after capturing his seventh front row start of the season. But tonight, my nickname for Nick Sanchez is Mr. Confident. Even though he come into this elimination race only three points above the cut line, you would never know. This might be the most confident I have seen Nick Sanchez all season. He loves this racetrack. He's done a tremendous amount of preparations, and things are really clicking for him and his team. His focus tonight will be on himself and his team's ability to execute this race and he feels like this is the closest for them to be able to do that. He said, hopefully we can seal the deal tonight and get my first our, my first truck series win. Amanda? Well, someone that's going to want to chase Nick Sanchez tonight is Matt DiBenedetto, who is 20 points back. When I asked him earlier, is it possible? He said that the team has worked through the all points possibilities and the surest pass for the 25 racing in round two of this playoff is a win right here at Kansas. He said of his chances, he spoke of running second here in the spring before being wrecked out. Matt and that winter bus game plan will start 11th. And Matt Benedetto in his first Truck Series playoffs. He's been in this scenario in the Cup Series before, but he is the odd man out, 20 points back as we drop the flag here tonight. You know what I love about this series, Phil? If you had asked me about three guys that might could win this race tonight and might be championship favorites, I would have said Zane Smith. I would have said Corey Heim. I would have said Carson Hosevar. And where'd they qualify? 14th, 15th, 17th. 
that's that's truck series racing right there. But I'm going to tell you guys, look look for these trucks to come to the front. And the reason why I say that, when you go qualify, you run wide open, and a truck that is trimmed out, maybe a little bit freer, is going to go faster in the afternoon all by yourself. Now we're going to go drafting. I mean, these trucks can run run wide open around this racetrack. They're going to be drafting tightly. So if you've got a little bit more downforce in your truck, maybe you don't qualify as well. That could be why those guys are back there. Pay attention and see who's able to charge to the front. We see about a second and a half drop off in 30 laps on these trucks. Well, let's take a look at the playoff picture so far. Average finishes for our top 10. Christian Eckes with a 2.5. They have turned up the wick. And there's a hard line right there. Look at right below Zane Smith, 8.5 for Zane. Everybody else above him, better than that. And look at those three guys on the bottom. Ben Rhodes, 16.0. De Benedetto, 18.5. That's why they're down below this cut line. And I don't care about Ben Rhodes' <laughs> average finish because tonight I think that team is on it. Let's listen to the radio. All right, man, we're going to do the deal tonight. We've all been here. We all can do this. So we're just going to take it one lap at a time and not get caught up in anything stupid, and we'll be fine. So do what you got to do. Keep it clean. See you here in a little bit. Ah, I love that. Keep it clean. But you know what I think is really valuable, Phil? He's a champion. Oh, yeah. He knows exactly what He's been what here is before. It. Yeah, he doesn't have any nerves about tonight. He's going to go get the job done. He knows how to perform under pressure. He's raced his way in before. Like you said, he's a champion. They had a fast truck today, so a lot to look forward to. But remember, practice qualifying, bright daylight. It was warm. Things are a lot different. Conditions are different. So who will prevail? As we ch see Chase Purdy on the front row. First career pole for him. Yeah, he chose the outside, and I think you'll see that a lot tonight. Got Jack Wood right behind him, teammate. Hopes for a good push from him. Let's get this baby started, Jamie. And remember, Nick Sanchez on the inside in the two. Rev Racing, they have an alliance with Kyle Busch Motorsports, so those KBM trucks fast tonight as the pace truck turns down pit road. Here we are, side by side, Chase Purdy, Nick Sanchez, Ty Majeski. Jack Wood, green flag, we're racing at Kansas. That's what you're going to see all night. <laughs> Look at that mess behind our front couple of rows. Really crazy action. Four and five wide going through turn one as you see Nick Sanchez comes out. He prevails and is our leader. Well, that didn't work out so, so well for Chase Purdy. Here comes your boy. Oh, he's loose on the bottom. Ben Rhodes. That was Ben Rhodes loose on the bottom of Chase Purdy. Ben Rhodes to second. Chase Purdy trying to hang on to that second spot. I think that might have been Majeski. Uh, yeah, I think it was Majeski. One of the trucks in the back there got really loose, but you can see Ben is heating up Chase Purdy for that second spot. Look at that action. We Big talked dive. about the draft too, Michael. The draft is so important here at this racetrack. And Majeski gets loose again underneath Jake Garcia. And here comes Jake Drew. We got a party of Jakes up in the front. Jake Drew for a Hattori Racing second truck. Doesn't have a whole lot of experience in the Craftsman Truck Series. Man, I'll tell you what I love is to see that 99 spark. And that means that truck's down on the ground doing everything it needs to do to be aerodynamically perfect. And what will happen is the tires gain temperature from running around this racetrack, burying those tires into the corner. The pressures will come up. That'll go away. He's going to be in a great spot. It's a pretty good spot right now, it looks like. Ben Rhodes to second. Chase Purdy gives up another spot back to third. Christian Eckes back and forth. And Jake Garcia hangs on to fifth. Here is the replay. Watch, Watch that. Majeski, that 98. I thought that was Ben Rose at first, but it was a Majeski. He's going to get loose underneath the four. He has to slow down at the back off. Ben Rhodes said, okay, that I got was, this high side. I'm going to be fine. That was a perfect case, uh, perfect scenario for Ben Rhodes. He was committed to the top, and the top opened up. Good start for Chase Purdy, though. In third place, he's been able to maintain. Have to watch Jack Wood. He qualified so well. He's back to the eighth position. Can he rally and get back up toward the top five? You know, we've seen this out of Nick Sanchez time and time again. Starts up front, leads a bunch of laps, 
But the second half, he hasn't been able to seal the deal. He's had some good finishes. He just hasn't found victory lane yet. And we heard the report talking about how confident Nick Sanchez is. So I wonder if this will be his place. And, you know, in the Arkham and Art series, Bill, we've talked about him. We've called Nick Sanchez winning not once but twice at Kansas. And he'll had 168 laps on the mile and a half at Texas before getting wrecked on the very last lap. So he knows how to get it done on the mile and a half. Watch this 88 truck all the way, all the way up to the 20. Third position so far, and he's sparking. Like I said, that's, I know if you're watching home, you're like, well, that can't be good. You're dragging the box. It is a good thing. His truck is set up well, even though he's never practiced a lap in it. They were on the scales earlier today when I talked to Matt, and he said, I believe in my boys, and I believe we can get the job done. So Jake Garcia, that's the white and black number 35. He was able to get by the four of Chase Purdy in that battle for third. Now Chase was able to I get think, back by him. I think that was a crossover. I think exactly. Jake made the move on Purdy in that four, but he couldn't hold it down low. And then Chase came back around. But that just shows you the speed of this Bill McAnally Hilgeman Racing number 35 truck. This team is doing a lot of great things, and they're really looking forward to 24 as well. Maybe adding another truck and, and being even more competitive. Bill McAnally, just every time you see him, he's just so joyful, so appreciative of what this team has been able to do, Bring Christian Eckes on, Jake Garcia. You know, when you talk about Jake, and we've done it a lot this year, he's so consistent, ran eighth here in his first time ever in May, so you imagine the things that he learned there that'll help him here tonight, it's showing. And you, and you see the Napa colors on that 19 of Christian Eckes. There's a reason that Napa and Bill McAnally have been together for over 30 years. That's that move right up in front of Purdy. Garcia made it happen at that time. Purdy didn't decide to go under him. He's going to maybe try to go around the top. But I think that 35 truck's really fast around the bottom. You can see him pulling away there. See if how much momentum that Purdy will have from the high side coming back. Not going to be enough to pull up beside of Jake Garcia. You see Jake wave out the window. Thank you for letting me, uh, for giving me a break. And watch right behind the four truck. It's that Napa truck that you spoke of he's coming to the front as well he's going to be someone they're going to have to deal with tonight I'm, I'm interested right now Phil to see whose trucks are maybe look like they're a little pushy they're tight in the corners wanting to go up the hill and who's hanging out I think right now if you're hanging out a little bit that could be an advantage you could maybe uh, see your truck come become more neutral and be faster longer into the run Christian Eckes up a few positions as Nick Sanchez continues to lead here at Kansas. A little contact between Chase Purdy and Jake Garcia. Jake Garcia got so excited. He hung <laughs> on to it. Well done. Woohoo!
and caution is out for the first time here at Kansas Speedway for Bailey Curry, an incident. It's around backwards, obviously has bigger issues. I don't think sparking that much is no. a good thing, right, Michael? Well, flat see. tires will help that, yeah, won't they? I think they're all four of them are flat, Bill, <laughs> so he's just struggling to get back to pit road. Bailey didn't get off to a great start, usually really fast in this 41 truck. I've been really proud to see the performance of Bailey in this Nice Motorsports 41, but today it's not been a great day, and it has every look of maybe he just got loose. See what happens here. Yeah, he's on the inside of another truck. We see that so often. That truck on the inside loses air off that spoiler that rear downforce and just around he goes. And I'm going to tell you, as a racer, Jamie, that happens so quickly. You know, you've got great grip and you're making the pass and then all of a sudden you don't. You're, it's gone yeah. and your truck is gone. But nice job of not getting into the outside wall. And a nice job by the racetrack of having all pavement down there below the racetrack. Yeah, not so many drivers were as lucky earlier today, whether it was practice here for Crossman Truck, it was the Arkham and Art Series, a lot of right side damage. I saw a red wedge wrench go into that right rear too. So obviously he said, I'm, I thought I was loose and now I know I am. Yeah. And he may not have felt that loose until he got underneath that other truck. Well, we continue under caution here for the first time at Kansas. We go green, it's all Nick Sanchez, Ben Rhodes. Welcome back to NASCAR Crestman Truck Series Racing live from Kansas as we remain under caution for the first time. The surprise here, we just saw one of our playoff contenders, the last winner, by the way, Grant Enfinger, come down and make an unscheduled pit stop. And guys, we heard a little on the radio something about a vibration, so something's not right with that truck. Yeah, I can see maybe short pitting the stage, but there's so many trucks. There's 32 trucks on the lead lap right now. Uh, Grant actually did this earlier this year. 
He restarted 17th with five laps to go in the stage and drove all the way to second to get second stage points. But this time, Heather, I guess he was talking about a vibration. Yes, and on the radio, he said that he was talking about a vibration in the car, but I just checked with the team, and they said that this was their plan. They wanted to get off of sequence for this race, as you guys just talked about, but they did make a track bar adjustment just to get him a little more snug so he can really get after it when we go back green. Amanda? Heather, we talked about Matt DiBenedetto's win or bus mentality here today. Well, he's already fallen three spots to the 14th position, but he's running in a brand new chassis here this weekend. They did use a similar setup from the spring race in Kansas, but said it's a bit evolved. Interesting. Got to evolve if you want to have a different outcome, right? Yeah, I thought it was really interesting. I talked to you guys earlier about being up at um, up where Grant Enfinger's trucks are housed at GMS and I saw a truck driving across the parking lot. I said, where's that truck going? They said, it's going to Bristol. I said, where's it been? They said, it won Milwaukee. I said, I thought you would save that for <laughs> Phoenix. And they said, well, we're going to take it to Phoenix if it gets through Bristol. But that's how important every race is. you got to bring your best stuff each week. And, and that's what DiBenedetto thought, thought they did. But so far, it hasn't worked out. Yeah, and that's why Enfinger's going to take that truck to Bristol. That's the second round. We know he's already through to that round. Yes. But then you gotta, you got to perform in that next round of three races. Who did that so spectacularly? That's a good word for me to say. <laughs> spectacularly. They're spectacularly Who choosing Who did that right last now? year? Ty Majewski. <laughs> he won when it mattered, and that's what it's all about in the playoffs. He won two of the next three races coming up last year. Just put on a show, punched his ticket to Phoenix, had a shot at the championship. He's won three races in his career. All three of those races have been playoff races. Talk about stepping up when it matters most. It's going to be fun to watch Enfinger back there to see how this play works out for this team. I guess if you want to mix it up, you do it now, early yeah, on. I like it. And this racetrack is wide enough. We, you can go three wide, or you can go to the top all the way to the bottom. So Enfinger is going to have the freshest tires in the field right now. So it's going to be really interesting to watch. The guys told me about a second and a half fall off in 30 laps. Now, we only ran about, what, 16, 17 green flag laps. So the fall off is probably not going to be quite that, but still going to be fun to watch. He's starting 25th. Let's make a note of that and see where he goes. So you see there, stage one, 11 to go. First stage break is at lap 30. Second stage break, lap 60. We'll do 134 laps tonight to decide it. Does he get back to the top 10 before the end of the stage? I think he does. And I'm also going to watch this number 35 truck. Jake Garcia is restarting on the outside behind Ben Rhodes. We saw earlier the pole sitter take the outside, and it didn't work. Nick Sanchez grabbed the lead on the bottom. Let's see what happens this time. Yeah, certainly worked for Nick Sanchez on the initial start of this race. He'll keep it on the bottom with Ben Rhodes on the outside. Jake Garcia, Chase Purdy behind him. A lot of wheels spin for the 35 of Garcia. Look yeah. how much ground he's losing to the inside line. And guess who else is losing ground because of that? Ben Rhodes, because he didn't get the push that he needed, but he's re rebounding on the outside. Look at Christian Eckes on the bottom, three wide. Oh. Contact there with Chase Purdy. Corey Heim trying to go through the middle on that 11 truck, the black and red truck. When they throw the green flag in a truck race, all bets are off. You're going to go wherever they're not, and it's going to be crazy, and that's what we saw here. Guys, I think the 35 of Garcia hit the wall coming off the of turn four. That's him in the middle right there. See on the outside of him, Jake Drew. 61. He's doing a nice job, Phil. Not a lot of starts here. He is doing a great job. He was our, our Arkham Menards West Series champion last year. Carson Hosevar up inside the top 10. That contact for Jake Garcia in the 35. He's now lost five positions. Watch him come on off turn four. I just caught a glimpse of this. There he is. Oh. oh. Hardly, hardly any contact. That didn't hurt anything, but no. that tells you the truck isn't handling like he wants it to when he gets back in that traffic. And it was so good yeah. prior to the caution flag. If you're looking at the pylon on the left side, you see the different colors. If they're green, they are locked in for the next round. If they're in gold, they want a chance to race in the round of eight. How about Grant Enfinger now racing for the 10th position with seven hey. laps to go in this stage? Didn't you call it? Yes. Did Michael take that bet? 
Yes. <laughs> I mean, if that means I was with him, I took it. <laughs> I agreed with Phil. This is a great call. What about Jeff Hensley? I, I love thinking outside the box, and that's what he's doing right here. Grant and Finger since the restart up 14 spots. Is tonight Nick Sanchez's night? We've seen him so close so many times and so far just dominant here in Kansas. Well, he's got all the pieces to the puzzle and he's got the experience at this racetrack probably more so than any other place we race. So if he's going to win any place, not to mention all the pressure, this would be it. You know, it, it, he, he took off and got the lead from the start checked one box, but then he also had a restart and had to get the lead again and is able to drive away. That's impressive. How about this 88 truck all the way from the back now is broken up in, into the top 15. We talked to him on the pace laps and he sounded very confident. Matt's always wanting to tell people to shut up, basically. <laughs> you, know, you talk about how old I am. You talk about this or that. How long it's been since he's won. Yeah. And that, just every, just yeah. shut up. And I'm going to show you what I'm doing. This is fun to watch. Up 17 positions so far for Matt Crafton. Good start for Stuart Friesen. Started back in the 20th position up inside the top 15. You know, this track opened way back in 2001. Matt Crafton's raced in all of them. Three-time winner here in the truck series at Kansas. His best race uh, racetrack statistically. You know who won that race in 2001? Ricky Hendrick. Ricky Hendrick. Mm. Yeah. Saw that, made me think of him. Yeah, I, re I remember. I remember how happy Mr. H was in victory lane with Ricky. Ooh, and caution. And caution is out for the second time. Turn three and four. As you see the 02 truck around, that's Caden Honeycutt. He left rear tires down on that truck. That certainly could be as a result of the spin. I think he cut another one or something, just lost it three and four. Right front's down as well. That's you hear the spotter talking about thinks he just lost it over in three and four. I felt like he was gonna have a good race tonight. But you can see both rear tires are flat. See if he can get on and off pit road. There's a tire mark on that right rear quarter panel, too, so possibility of maybe he got into another truck. And I uh, have to pull this truck up to get that jack under there. You see the team members pulling on the fenders. See if he can get in and off pit road without losing another lap. Caden Honeycutt, the 20-year-old out of Willow Park, Texas, driving for Young's Motorsports. One of those that's a part-timer. Let's go on board. Oh. Oh, there's your leader right in front of our leader, Nick Sanchez. That'll get your attention. You can see the smoke up ahead. So nice when you see the truck going down off the banking when you're committed to the top. One thing you notice that Chase Purdy's been able to get around Ben Rhodes to grab that second spot back. He's staying in the hunt. You know, I, I, as a fan, I can't decide if I'm pulling for Nick Sanchez or, or Chase Purdy. They're both great stories. I'm, I think I'm good with either one. Yeah, me, me too. And I talked about picking Ben Rhodes to win the race. He's right there lurking. But look at Corey Heim. I talked about him qualifying outside the top 10. And he's already up inside the top five. I think this is my championship favorite. He's going to do what he's got to do to advance to the, to the championship four, I believe, and my favorite to win the championship. He's been incredible. And by the way, he says this is his all-time favorite racetrack. He loves the three grooves. He says it just plays into his wheelhouse. He showed his strength actually running in the Arkham and Art Series part-time. Won that race three years ago now. Toyota saw him and said, let's, let's take this kid under our wing and give him a chance. And look what he's been able to produce. And you know what I love, Phil? Last year, when you didn't really even know about, about Corey Heim, goes to Darlington and restarts on the front row late to win the race. In his debut. That's that's all I needed to see to say, <laughs> all right, this kid not only will win truck races, he will win cup races one day. And there's very few people that come along in the truck series that you're bold enough to make that statement. We've said it about Eric Jones. We've said it William about Chris, Byron. Christopher Bell, William Byron. This, this is another kid that's in that same position. And he's a two-time winner already this season. So this will officially end our stage one. Nick Sanchez picks up the stage win. That'll be his third of the season.
So we'll step aside. Nick Sanchez, it's been all him so far. He's led all 28 laps. Stay with us. We'll have pit stops on the backside. Welcome back to Kansas Speedway, where Nick Sanchez just picked up the stage win. He's led all the laps so far. Two cautions for 10 laps in that stage number one. Yeah, 10 points for Nick Sanchez. It's big. It's big. huge. Really I, big. Down there fighting at the yeah. end. Yeah, man. Remember, Nick Sanchez came in only three points to the good to advance. Into the next round. The yeah. next round. Doom, doom, doom. Very well said, Jamie. I didn't say the line. I didn't say anything <laughs> about the line. He is in a great position <laughs> to advance to the next round. Let's go to pit row. What Let's do you do say? It. Everybody's coming down for adjustments. Amanda, they're coming your way. Well, you can see the four pull off there. He's actually in the first pit box here. Easy ride for him on pit lane. Said this is his favorite track to race out. Some fuel and some tires for the four. And then on to Ben Rhodes. I can watch him right now. They said they wanted to get that Arca rubber off these tires. So new tires there. Going to take a track bar adjustment as they look to find more groove here in Kansas, Heather. And stage one winner, Nick Sanchez, said the balance stayed basically the same, just a tick free. So his crew chief, Danny Stockman, said, we're going to get a little bit of ahead of it in here, tighten you up with a track bar adjustment. And then on the bottom of your screen to the left, Corey Heim, same thing. His crew chief, Scott Zipidelli, said, we're getting cooler temperatures. Track's starting to free up, so we'll tighten him up this pit stop. All right, so temperature's coming down, tightening up the trucks. Got to think ahead here for the distance of the race. 32 laps into a 134-lap race. Stay with us. We'll drop the green flag once again after this.
Welcome back to Kansas Speedway. We're still under caution here for the second time. And you see Grant and Finger stayed out there, but mixed up the strategy a little bit. They said they had a vibration, but I think this may be part of their plan. Well, they said they had a vibration that came in on lap number 17, put four tires on. And right now, I don't think they can afford to give up another set of tires. They only have two more sets of tires. So if they came in now and put another set of tires on, that means they couldn't put another set on at the end of the stage second stage or close to the ending stage and have another one for the middle of that final stage when they make the final pit stop. So I think uh, Jeff Hensel is a pretty smart guy. He's been around here a long time, but I don't think that he would have wanted to give one of giving up that set of tires for sure. But they only have seven green flag laps but, on those tires on that truck. But also think about Jeff Hensley. You talk about what a smart guy he is. They they might have had this in their playbook to come in early if there was an opportunity and just mix things up, see if they get some track position. And any and, and on the other hand, Phil, if you have a vibration, you're an experienced racer like Grant Infinger is, and you say you got a vibration, you want to take care of that truck and you want to make sure you give your driver a chance to win the race at the end of the day. So uh, I think time will tell. We'll see how how well he holds on on these tires that have seven more laps. I don't think he's going to drop like a rock, do you? He may drop a few positions, but I think he's going to settle in somewhere in the top five or ton, top ten, I would guess. Well, this just in. Carson, hosts of our fans, you are liking this news. He has locked himself into the round of eight. As he just you turned see, green. He just name. turned green. Turn green. Green means go. What a difference a year makes. Anybody remember this race a year ago, the heartbreak? Finished second and lost that opportunity. Didn't have enough points to advance. He got passed on the last lap, Jamie. The very last lap of the race he got passed and got knocked out of the playoffs. That wasn't happening this year. This team is so much better. He's a better race car driver. He's got three wins under his belt. Just what a difference a season makes. So congratulations to that 42 team in these motorsports. And that means last year he was below what, Michael? The, the he didn't advance. <laughs> This is the below he didn't advance. The bo below he didn't advance line. I hope the fans at home aren't getting tired of this, but I think the cut line, uh, it goes away. It moves. It's, it's fluid. It's like, it's like the sands of time. It comes and it goes. It is a fluid situation. But it's so cool to know Carson Hosevar, Christian Eckes, Corey Heim, Tom Majeski and Grant Infinger, they're in. They're going for a championship, or they're going into the next round. And that's great news for Grant Enfinger. Of course, he got that win two weeks ago at Milwaukee, our last race. Mixed up the strategy a little bit here. Older tires trying to warm him up. As he will lead the field to green on the outside. And Nick Sanchez, stage one winner on the inside. Corey Heim, Ben Rhodes behind them. Grant Enfinger is a big Corey Heim fan right now. He wants that push. He wants that shove, and he got it. But it's not. Is it going to be enough? We know how fast Sanchez has been down there on the bottom. And he's going to grab the lead. Wow. Nick Sanchez, amazing restarter. Seen it all season long. Ben Rhodes, side by side with Grant Enfinger. They're side by side everywhere. Look at Hosevar. <laughs> The blue and black 42 is going to slide up in front of Eckes. Four wide. The restarts here are just incredible. I think Stuart Friesen just drove down to the grass, and that blue truck almost got together with Jake Garcia. Jake Garcia way back there in that mess. Look Saw at Ben Rhodes. Top five earlier. Ben Rhodes wants a piece of this lead. Nick Sanchez does not want to give it up. He's going to side draft him down the, into the corner. Both of them slipping and sliding. You can see the trucks bobbling as they head up the racetrack off turn four. Ben Rhodes trying to get the lead for the first time tonight. Nick Sanchez says not so quick. Look at all the side drafting going on. And look who's lurking back there in third. Grant Enfinger has hung on on those older tires. Look at that view. They're two feet off each other at 180 miles an hour. They keep running side by side for long, though, and Eckes will be right there on them. Christian Eckes says, you boys just keep doing your duty. I'm here watching. Look at this going on now for lap three laps side by side. Look at that snarling pack that's coming behind them, though. 
Man, that's so hard to do. Oh, what's going oh, on no. with Chase Purdy? Must have had a loose wheel. They're jacking up the left side, putting on tires. That has ever look of a loose wheel. See what happens. Just got to minimize the damage here. Don't speed on pit road. Probably will lose a lap, but he's got a fast enough truck to get that lap back. You see the pack coming around as Chase Purdy makes his way down pit road. Big slip Big for Sanchez. Ben Rose. Out Rose. front now, look at the 42 of Carson Hosevar slips into the second spot. Rhodes had a big slip while battling, battling for the lead and lost a spot to Hosevar. And here comes Eckes. And look behind them. We're going to talk about Zane Smith in these last few races this year. I can promise you that. He's right up in the top five after starting outside the top ten. Hearing Chase Purdy had a really, really bad vibration, to your point. Loose wheel there, got that taken care of. He is back out on track. They have a way of monitoring. They have cameras, actually, that will film the pit stop. So I'm sure they went back and looked at the camera and said, we must not have got the lug nuts tight on the left side. It looked like that was a questionable side. Somebody else that had issues on pit road, Ty Majeski came in. He was 10th, a 21-second pit stop. He lost 10 spots back in 20th. Comes Zane Smith trying to move to the inside of Eckes and that battle for fourth. Battles all over the racetrack. Carson Hosevar, it's like somebody said, hey buddy, you're green, you're in, go for it. Push the limits, see what we can do here. Closing that gap on Nick Sanchez. But how impressive has this two truck been tonight? Nick Sanchez, we talked about Texas, the fact he led 168 laps leading on the last lap and got wrecked and here he is doing it again on a mile and a half 36 laps led so far tonight out of 42 definitely on par to have another one of those performances but he just wants the outcome to be a little bit better <laughs> Corey Himes going to grab that fifth spot the Mekas see him fingers hanging in there in seventh would you look at this pylon the cream rises to the top Nine of the ten top spots right now are playoff drivers. Taylor Gray back there going back and forth with Matt Crafton in the ninth spot. The only one not in the playoffs. Yeah, Majeski's the only guy in the playoffs that's not in that top ten. We talked about his bad pit stop. He's right now back in the 20th spot. Heather, what are they saying in Matt Crafton's pit? Yeah, well, as we know, he's a very passionate driver behind the wheel and on the radio, and I just heard him say, I'm going to wreck him, and I'm not sure if he was referring to the 17 or we see the 15 coming up on the inside there, but his team reminded him, we know, however, let's not wreck our stuff tonight. You have a fast race truck, keep going towards the front, and as you know, we start at 31st and all the way up into the top 10 now. Well, Heather, you take a look at the number four of Chase Birdie. He's back in the pack now, but look at that. He's one lap down. He is in that lucky dog spot. If the caution comes out, it was a loose left front tire for Chase Purdy. Thanks, Amanda. Tough break for him. What a tough you know? break. But it may not be over for him again. He's in the free pass position right now. Greg Van Alst is the last. Oh, truck on the lead lap as Ben Rhodes gets completely sideways off of turn four. And look at the defensive driving that Zane Smith had to do. He passed him and then he had to block him. That's how tight things are here in the trucks. And look at Carson Hosevar eating up that white line on the bottom. He's trying to get alongside our leader, Nick Sanchez. Zane Smith is on the move, and you mentioned it, Michael. Keep your eye on him. He's coming in hot. He knows how to win. One year, a couple years ago. That's the guy you better watch. Look at him pulling up on the lead duo after battling his way all the way from starting outside the top 10. How about this battle? Corey Heim trying to make his way up into the top four, getting by Ben Rose for fourth. That feels good, you know, when your truck will go down on the bottom and you can hook that white line and complete a pass. That's what the hardest thing to do is, completing the pass when you're down on the bottom because the momentum is on the high side. You can see he made the pass on the bottom, then went right up to the top. Ben Rhodes has given up a few spots since that restart. Nick Sanchez has about a three-tenths of a second lead over Carson Hosevar. Will step aside, but you won't miss a thing.
we have a new leader in Kansas. Carson Hosebar up 16 spots from the start of the race. Leads his first laps here tonight. We talked about that in the opening. Just because you qualified out, out back all by yourself in the sunshine of the day doesn't mean you don't have a really fast truck. Carson Hosevar knew in that team, Phil Gould, they knew what they needed to go win this race tonight in practice, and it wasn't the qualified front. There was more to it than that. Zane Smith qualified 14th. He runs third now. Corey Heim qualified 15th. He runs fourth now. Five playoff drivers qualified in the top 10. The other five outside the top 10. So it was an interesting afternoon after the issues in practice. We had cautions coming out. There were all kinds of things going on. And now three of those that were outside the top 10 qualifying are in the top four now. And Ben Rhodes was battling for the lead just 20 laps ago. I think and this truck was really recently. loose. Ooh, oh, hits the wall right that's, there. That's significant. That's going to bend that right rear quarter panel. We saw him earlier getting really loose coming off turn four. See all the black marks on turn four? That means it's, it's difficult. But these professional drivers keep sliding into the wall. There's things going on. That wall has gotten a workout today. Rhodes remains in the top five. Grant Enfinger hanging in there on those older tires. There you I, see Christian Eckes on the bottom. Look I, at this run for Enfinger off the corner. He might even think about moving forward from that seventh spot. He's going to have a great run on Enfinger. Grant Enfinger to the inside of Christian Eckes, and he gets it, picks up the sixth spot. Can he hold it down there? Oh, no, not quite. And here comes Eckes to the inside. He tried to get up there and take Eckes' air away, and he did. And then Eckes just turned left and drove <laughs> underneath him. I think both these trucks right now are faster than that 99 of Ben Rhodes. I wonder how much damage was done to the aerodynamics of the 99. That right rear quarter panel, the right rear side of that truck is very sensitive about making lap time. You want to have all that fender out into the wind that you can. And when you hit the wall, obviously, it smashes it in. It creates so much side force for these trucks, and they lean on that side force in the corner. Right now, Grant Enfinger is going to lean on that side force to, to grab that spot from Ben Rose. He did it. And he does it, the 23. To the fifth spot behind these three, Matt Benedetto in the top 10, running eighth right now, and he knows his clear-cut path to make it to the round of eight. He's got a win. He was on the outside looking in. I don't think Ben wanted to get that spot up. Well, uh, Grant, not neither. I just want <laughs> this is why truck racing is so fun. You're, you know, as an old racer like I, you and I are, Phil, you're like, just follow him, push him, give him a, let's, maybe we'll go faster together if we just push each other. Guys, we got three laps to go on the stage. Ben needs all those points. Wow, what a battle. Battle for fifth right here. Christian Eck has not given up. Don't you love how colorful our pylon is? Green and yellow, and then you see Rock on the roof. You saw Eckes when he got by him, he had to get off the throttle. He saw the fire come out of the exhaust pipes. Ben wants that point. He needs that point. Two laps to go. Pits are officially closed. Carson Hosebar continues to lead up front. Nick Sanchez, Corey Heim, Zane Smith, and then this battle. I think this battle is over. I think Christian's going to be able to drive away from Ben, just like Carson Hosebar has been able to drive away from the field. He's up over two and a half seconds. What an impressive drive in this stage has been for Carson Hosebar. What an impressive drive it's been for this driver all year long. Got that win at Texas, and he's just matured so much behind the wheel of this race truck. Ran the Xfinity Series, top 10 that. Had that impressive debut in the Cup Series out in St. Louis where he drove up inside the top 15 before having an issue. And he does it. Carson Hosevar leads 12 laps, picks up his third stage win of the season. We get another one of those playoff points to carry to that next round. Both are valuable. What a difference a year makes for this young man. Carson Hosevar gets the stage win. Can he get his fourth win of the season?
The NFL regular season kicks off Sunday on Fox with a huge doubleheader. First, Christian McCaffrey and the 49ers take on the Steelers or other regional action. Then in America's Game of the Week, Jordan Love leads the Packers against Justin Fields and the Bears or the Rams battle the Seahawks. It all kicks off Sunday on Fox. I cannot wait for these games on Sunday. My Colts are playing with our brand new quarterback, Anthony Richardson. But we've got to we've got to tip the hat to this man, Phil Parsons, and his Lions last I night. How my Lions look last night? They looked good. I Thank was impressed. You very much. My favorite comment about the Lions winning last night: Eric Jones said on Twitter or whatever it's called now, "That's the X. best Lions game I've seen in 27 years." <laughs> and I got to thinking, how old is Eric Jones? So that's the best game he's ever seen. <laughs> he's 27, so he's never seen a better Lions don't, game than that. Don't one. ask me how long it's been since I saw a game that good. I yeah, you used to go when. When you're a teenager, yes. when they they were good in '57, right? '57, yeah, I wasn't quite ready yet to go, but yes, they won the championship, NFL championship, obviously several years before the Super Bowl started. Man, how fun is it that NFL on Fox is back? Mm -hmm. I mean, I love NASCAR on Fox, and and it's just a perfect partnership with the NFL just to enjoy sports. Man, it's a good time of year. Well, we talked about the '99 getting into the wall, slip back to the seventh spot. What are they saying on the radio? We have to do a big combo adjustment here because I don't know if something was messed up or not, but the track the track made that big of a change. We're way loose, so we need track bar and wedge and air pressure. It's going to kill the stop, but what we got to do, we got to do it. we got to fix the truck because I'm doing all I can and just about wrecking every single lap. Wow, we saw it with totally. that big slide off turn four, but then if you think about what he's asking for, he wants them to tighten it up three different ways. He wants wedge, he wants track bar, and he wants an air pressure adjustment. We'll see how long it takes this team to execute that, and like they said, we're gonna use, lose some track position, but the champion, the former champion, Ben Rhodes, the experienced driver that he is, he knows what he needs, and that's what this team is gonna have to do. Yeah, he knows he's too far away right now the way it is. He's, he has to have those adjustments. And Brian Ross said it's going to kill us on the stop, and Ben said it's worth it. We're going to lose some spots, but we got to take it to make this truck better and drivable. Pit Road is open. They're headed your way. Amanda. You're going to see the 42 make his way here. And, Jamie, I think he uh, heard you say that he was in the green to race <laughs> in round two because he went straight down to win this day. But as he pulls in, hey, he's just really enjoyed this truck. He told me earlier in qualifying that he wasn't worried about what they were going to do in the race tonight, that they had to set things for the long run. So Carson clinched into round two, Heather. And Zane Smith telling his team he's just losing the nose in the center to exit. He's a little bit free and needs more landing grip. So they're going to make an adjustment to tighten him up. And then also Nick Sanchez, his team, they had a communication issue where Nick couldn't tell him what he needed. But right before the stop, he was able to communicate he's too free. So again, they went three rounds on the track bar for the number two. That's got to be frustrating. They can't even hear their driver to know what his feedback is. But good news is he has Danny Stockman on the pit box. He can see what that truck is doing and made those changes. So you see the stage points earned so far today. Nick Sanchez with 19 on top. Yeah, it wouldn't change a whole lot if you are right. Danny Stockman, Nick Sanchez won one stage, second in this last stage. Corey Himes had a good showing so far. Carson Hosvar just won that stage. See Ben Rhodes there. He talked about the long pit stop. Only lost one spot on pit road. But our leader coming to pit road, Carson Hosovar, lost three spots. So he'll have to battle back. So Nick Sanchez, Corey Heim will lead the way after the break.
Welcome to the Sunflower State. Great night for racing. He means business. Watched a lot of action. It's going to heat up. Here we go. They're all over each other. Welcome back to the NASCAR Crestman Truck Series Kansas Lottery 200. So 66 laps in the book, 68 laps to go. The first two stages are finished. It's all about the final stage, the second half of this race. Like I said, a lot of movement on pit road. Carson Hosevar will line up fourth after winning that stage. Great pit work by Corey Himes bunch, Scott Cipadelli's crew to get Corey the lead. Be interesting to see what kind of changes worked and, and maybe who didn't need changes so much, but we talked about the two and Nick Sanchez. That truck's been so good, but they still adjusted because they're thinking big picture to the end of this race and what they're going to need. Yeah, and it's also important, Phil, you know, to keep up with this racetrack. It's Absolutely. getting cooler and cooler. So you have to take into consideration what your truck was doing and what it might do. And what your notebook says about these nighttime races here at Kansas. But I think the most important thing to watch, if I'm a fan at home, the draft. Watch how they push. Watch how they shove. And the restarts and how wild it's going to get. We think it's been crazy so far. It's not going to get any less crazy. They really haven't done a lot of pushing and shoving, but that, that's getting ready to happen. Matt Crafton, you saw that yellow truck go by. He's in 13. He and Matt Benedetto. De, be, Matt De Benedetto. <laughs> and Ty Majeski back there as well. He lost all those spots on pit road the first stop. And he's only fought his way back up six positions, so he's back there in 14th. Hasn't made a whole lot of noise tonight. Both those mats really need a strong finish to this race, or they're not going to be able to transfer to the next round. Corey Heim, the control truck, and Nick Sanchez. Side by side. This is the first time we've seen Corey Heim restart on the front row. We'll see what this truck is made of. How about that orange truck, third row outside? Taylor Gray, great pit work. Get him up to sixth on this restart. What about that jump by Nick? By Corey Heim is able to pull ahead of Nick. Trying to jump up in front of Nick Sanchez and get bunched up. Here comes Carson Hosebar right through the middle. Four wide. <laughs> At oh, least wow. three. That's bold going up the middle like Carson did. What will happen when he gets down here to turn three is Zane gets a big push on the bottom from Christian Eckes. You just talked about it. The push, the draft. But Corey Heim to the lead. The 38 and Zane Smith tucks in behind him. Christian Eckes is there. Nick Sanchez back to fourth and Carson Hosevar to his inside. And that bigger right behind Sanchez. That strategy worked out for them. Finished fifth in that stage with a little bit older tires for Grant Enfinger. Christian Eckes in that Napa truck. Oh, Matt Crafton scrubbed the wall. There he is. Slow off turn two after contact. Matt Crafton fought his way from the back all the way up into the top 10. It'll take a lap bit. or so to feel it out to make sure you can see the quarter panel is definitely pushed over, Michael. We talk about how that right rear quarter panel is. Oh, oh, that was really hard. Yeah, he was loose, really loose, and bobbles up the track. That's going to end his day. Not maybe he's going to finish, but he can't be competitive without that right rear fender on it. No, I think right now, if unless one of these other playoff contenders that's not locked in, unless the, one of those has trouble, I think that's probably going to end his playoffs. Yeah, the playoff pictures getting to be more and more clear every lap we run. You know, when you have the stages, it's really difficult to follow along who's where because you don't know how they're going to finish at the end of the race. But now after calculating those stage points, we've got a pretty clear picture that this guy is in trouble. Yeah, Matt Crafton off the pace after getting that wall. He only had nine points to the good coming in, so huge. I think he has a flat tire right now. Maybe the right front tire has gone down. I, I noticed the 99 was slow as well. And they just made a bunch of changes to this 99 truck, trying to go in the right direction. Look at that right rear quarter. Right rear looks like it's flat. 
See, it's pushed over just like Matt Kraft. Look at all the damage back there. And, you know, we heard Ben talk about how loose his truck was, and he wanted all those adjustments. The team went to work on it, but obviously he's gotten loose again and into the outside wall. We're staying green here. Despite the issues by the 88, Matt Crafton was making his way down pit road, riding on board with the 99. Ben Rhodes has his hands full. He sure does. At, at a reduced pace right now, it's all he can do to keep that truck straight. I mean, right now, Matt DiBenedetto's team has to be thinking, ooh, maybe we have a chance here, because we know Matt Crafton's crippled. Ben Rhodes right now is struggling. Heather. And the, the team telling, the crew chief telling the team right now, take your time here to get those fenders cleared from the tires. They did say on the radio there was a little bit of tire smoke as you see the damage on the right rear of the truck. The team also going to work on the right front. Just trying to get that truck back out on track as quickly as possible. But again, they were told they could take their time, guys. Every point matters, though. You can't give up. If you can get back out there and salvage some points, it could pay off for you in the end. Just ask Carson Hosevar, who just missed out by a point in this race last year as he continues to battle up front. Corey Heim, though, leading his first laps of the night, 11 so far. Yeah, Hosevar actually had gotten by Corey Heim on the back stretch. Corey got back by him. Now Zane Smith is all over the back of the 42 of Hosevar. Michael, don't look at this graphic right now, but it is the cutoff. As they run right now, this is what it would look like if the race were to end right now. Matt Benedetto below, Matt Crafton back by 11. But, Jamie, breaking news, it's not going to end right now. <laughs> And, and Ben Rhodes is in trouble, and Matt DiBenedetto is inside the top 10. He's moved up to the eighth position. You said it, Phil. This team is thinking, we got a chance at this. What is going to be, what is going to happen to Ben Rhodes, and how will that affect as see Carson Hosevar storming back to the lead? And can Matt move up from his eighth position to keep, remember, every position is a point gained. Ben is hanging on. He's still on the lead lap, but he's all the way back in the 26th position. He needs a caution right now to be able to work on that truck. That last lap of Ben Rhodes was a second and a half slower than our leader, Carson Hosevar, was running. Amanda, what are they saying? Jamie, I got eyes on the crew right now. You can see how they are just sick to their stomach. They're going to keep Ben out there for now. He's being radioed over. We're head of the 88. We're head of the 25. Well, Amanda, you look his hands inside that truck. He's turning right, right there. He's turning right more than he is left. That just tells you how loose that truck is. He's running 170 miles an hour, and he's having to turn the wrong way to make it around the corner. This is, is this is what champions are made of, being able to battle through this if he's able to do so. That truck is virtually undrivable right now for Ben Rhodes. He's got about 15 seconds over the guys that are leading the race. So he's just trying to hang on, hope for a caution. I think that's only going to last about 10, 12 more laps if they keep stay under green what what before he Matt, gets lapped. What about Matty D stepping up? We haven't seen a lot of speed lately out of this 25 truck, but here he is inside the top 10. There's two more spots just ahead of him. And look on the chicklets. I like the chicklets, those yellow things on the right. <laughs> That so shows that De Benedetto was fourth fastest lap last time by. Well, big news for Matt De Benedetto last week announced he will not return to Rackley Ward next year. Certainly not stepping away from racing, but he won't return. But how cool would it be for them to punch their ticket and make it to the second round? Carson Hosevar continues to lead. 54 laps to go from Kansas.
And the battle continues here at Kansas Speedway up front. Carson Hosebar, the 20-year-old, battling Corey Heim, the 21-year-old. They were, they were going at it during their commercial break, weren't they? They were, and then Heather DeBow told us during break that there was some debris on the front of the 11, so he got up behind Carson Hosebar, got it off, but and then there was contact. Watch this. Just trying to race alongside Hosevar. Hosevar slides up the track, and watch what happens to Heim. Into the outside wall. I've talked about it, Phil. That right rear sensitive. Can he overcome? Heather, what are they saying after that contact to the wall? Well, I can almost hear Corey Heim take a deep breath and kind of in frustration and a little scared there that he might have wrecked the truck too much. But the team told him, hey, the right side looks okay, rear looks okay. Just take a deep breath again, relax, and keep moving forward. It's always interesting to watch a young driver like this in his first playoffs and everything that comes with it. It's not just another race. No matter what they tell them, oh, it's just another race. Go out there and do what you always do. It's, it's not the same. And you have an incident like that, and like Heather said, you could hear it in his voice that he was nervous. Meanwhile, the 88, another playoff driver, Matt Crafton on pit road. Yeah, more trouble for the 88 of Matt Crafton. They were checking the tires here. They changed the left sides already, but I just heard him on the radio say, hey, is the other side flat? So that you can see the team working around to the right side of the truck to put a tire on that right front as well. And as they're going to bring out the hammer to maybe fix some of that earlier damage from getting into the walls. There you see on the right, Ben Rose with that ill driving number 99 Kubota truck. I think I pit now. Once I got lapped, he's in his window. 46 laps to go. Come in and pit, try to make some adjustments to try to overcome the, the body damage he has. Try to make the best of this situation. Oh, man, I'm telling you, this is all he wants right now. He is driving the heck out of that truck. He'll probably stay out until he's no longer the free pass vehicle. Then I think he'll probably hit pit road. So Ben Rhodes back in 27th spot. You mentioned it, Phil. He's in the free pass position right now. Meanwhile, I'm just looking at the top 10. You see Ty Majeski. There he is in the 98 has entered the top 10. It's taken him quite a while to make up those 10 spots he lost on pit road. Yeah, he lost 10 spots on pit road at the end of the first stage and never got into the top 10 during the second stage. But here he goes by Jay Garcia for the ninth spot. Hey, Jay Garcia, he was battling up there in the top three, four early on. He got some of the wall. Now he's found his way finally back up inside the top 10. Chase James in the 33 truck bill. He is now the first truck a lap down. So as you said, maybe Ben Rhodes comes to pit road right now. Once he loses that free pass position, I bet he hits pit road. We know everybody will have to come to pit road. They can go a little bit farther than this, but I think for Ben Rhodes now, come to pit road, work on that truck and try to see if he can get some of that pace back. There he is, just like we thought. Look at this battle for the lead on the right. How cool is it? Carson Hosevar, Corey Heim just going toe to toe. And Ben Rhodes making his way to you, Amanda. Man, and hopefully he's going to alleviate his pain. His crew chief, Brian Ross, is on his feet overlooking this change. Fuel is going into the truck, the left hand side of the truck. They are making work adjustments on it. I see those new tires. They asked for a track bar adjustment as well in all the requests. Ben Rhodes, I hope your night gets better, buddy. Well, they fulfilled all those requests. They made sure they got it done. So we'll see what the night has in store. For I didn't see a lot of adjustment, did you, Michael? Well, Just they did they, probably to the tires with the air pressure yes, and yes. also to the wedge on the left rear. But you know, Phil, what they can't fix or what they didn't work on is that right rear quarter panel. And at these speeds, you can see how it's going over to the left. And at these speeds, you can't fix that. It's just impossible. You've got to have that downforce. That's how sensitive these bodies are. And that's why when you hit the wall, like we saw with Ben Rhodes, you just can't overcome yeah, it. Yeah, I saw that it looked like a very small track bar adjustment. I think I'd have done three or four rounds to lower that track bar to try to tighten that truck up a little bit. We'll watch the lap times and see if uh, how much pace he may have gotten back. Yeah, because all these trucks are going to come to pit road here in the next, what would you say, 10 laps, Phil? Yeah, I think about 10 laps, I would guess. 
just about 40 laps to go. And this is reminiscent of a year ago when we saw Carson Hosevar leading. Just great truck until the last lap. John Hunter Nemechek makes the pass on him. Thought he was good. Thought he didn't have to win the race to make his way into the next round. And that wasn't the case. Some of the trucks may be a little bit off the pace of these two drivers right here. May elect to try to stop a little bit earlier and try to use those new tires to get some of that pace back. Two tenths separate these two for first and second, but Zane Smith is about three and a half seconds back from them. Oh, what's wrong? Here we go. Levin to pit road. We thought it'd be later, but he decided he was going to come right now. We saw that little scrape on the wall. Doesn't look like the right rear of that truck has hurt that badly, so that's why he's able to maintain pace. I like this call right here by Scott Zipidelli. Beating Carson Hosevar to pit road, right? Just exactly. trying to get that lap time for a lap or two, Heather, and that's all this team will need to get the lead. Absolutely, and he told everyone, be on your toes. We could come at any minute. They're going to have to back up the truck here because he went a little too far, but they're going to do four tires and take tape off the front of the 11 of Corey Heim. Amanda. Oh, and looky, looky, there, the 42 right in after these guys are going to battle it out as we continue through this stage. When they were going along earlier, his team uh, radioed over to Carson and said, hey, if you cannot get away from the 11, just play that dirty air game. Change is happening. The tire's going on for Carson. This is going to be a fun battle. But, but Corey Heim slid through his pit, and so that's going to that's gonna show up as soon as these trucks get back on the track. I think you're going to give the advantage after a normal pit stop to Carson Hosevar. 98's got a fire. Amanda. Looks like he's just trying to re-fire that truck. There was a push from one of the crew guys to get it going. Yeah, that was just raw fuel in the exhaust. Heather. And Zane Smith on the previous stop said he needed more grip. They're going to keep going in that direction for the 38 as we see him slide into his pit box there. Team going to work for four tires and moving up pit road for Nick Sanchez. He said he just needs a little bit more security center exit. The, the team making adjustments right now for Sanchez. More adjustments for Nick Sanchez. Good to see that Ty Majeski all was well. They had their issues earlier on, but looks like he got his adjustments, his tires, fuel, good to go. Grand end finger, a little spillage there. No harm, no foul. That's, that's not exactly. We just saw Grant Infinger on pit road there, and he was complaining that he was just a little bit too free, so a track bar adjustment for the 23. Thank you, Heather, for that update. Amanda, Matt Benedetto on pit road. Well, that last stage break that they had was a blessing for the 25. There was a lug nut that was loose on the left rear, and something got stuck between the wheel and the caliper that they were able to take. But, Jamie, you talked earlier about Matty D not knowing what's going to happen for him next season. So he's also racing with that tonight, hoping people are seeing what he's doing in this performance. Said he is an open book. He is open for all of it and what chances might be happening next season. Yeah, Amanda, and that team's doing a nice job. They got that win last year. The second full year, they hired an engineer this year to better themselves. Guys, I've been watching the lap times. Ben Rhodes has been no faster back on the racetrack with those four fresh tires than what he was running before the caution came out. So right now it's just ride it out for Ben Rhodes. Hopefully he can run this speed not completely out of control like he was before that pit stop. Uh oh back to pit road Grant Infinger getting a report from NASCAR that he was speeding. So we'll have to do a pass through penalty. Take Grant just, out of contention. Just serve that. That's when you, you're happy you have that win in your back pocket. You're mm -hmm. not in this whole point scenario. So you make a, a mistake. It's no good, but it doesn't affect your outcome. A couple of differing strategies going on. Tanner Gray is leading this race right now with John Wood in second. They haven't pitted yet. See how this plays out. Tanner Gray, Jack Wood up front, Jesse Love in third right now, still to pit. Stay with us, you won't miss a thing as we go NASCAR side by side.
Welcome back to Kansas Speedway. Jack Wood just peeled off, still pitting under green right now, but the first driver with four fresh tires, Corey Heim, about to take over the lead as you see Less changes being made to the 51. On, problem on the right rear, is that what it looks like? Yeah. Maybe the air gun broke? Looked like the air gun broke, broke because they brought the front changer over there to tighten lug nuts on the rear, but. Man, that's a shame. They took a, took a chance, stayed out, ran long, stayed on the racetrack, as Brett Holmes is doing right now. He's still on the racetrack and is a leader in this 32 truck. He needs gas pretty soon. He's just hoping for a caution right now to flip his race around. Brett Holmes, an Arkham Menard Series champion. Yeah, Brett can probably go another 10 laps or so. You can run, you know, close to 55 laps. Right now, he pitted on lap 64, so he's only run 42 laps. I would go all of them, Phil, but I don't know if that's going to happen. Yeah, it looks like he's coming to pit road now. <laughs> I, I would uh, take a chance, throw it out there, see what happens. So as Brett Holmes comes down pit road, that gives the lead back to Corey Heim. Who had a nice stop. He had to back it up. We thought he'd lose more than he did. Well, that tells you how fast that pit stop was. And then pitting a lap sooner, probably about a second and a half fall off. He took advantage of that by having those fresh tires over the competition. Carson Hosevar had a great pit stop, but this strategy and the, the, the crew on the 11 overcame the mistake that the driver made. That's good teamwork. So Carson Hosevar just under two seconds behind the 11. There's a battle for four. Christian Eckes, Nick Sanchez. See Sanchez running that higher line. Look at all the momentum he gets, plus the draft going down the front straightaway. A couple of trucks off pit road there. Haley Deegan, you saw the 13 truck making her way back to the track. There's Chase Purdy. Remember the tough break Chase had a loose wheel. Cost him a lap. He's hanging in there though, Phil. 15th place, still on the lead lap. He's gonna have to drive his Bama buggies off to be able to stay on the lead lap though. They're ahead of Heim. We know how fast he is, but look at, look at the pace of the four truck. Oh. Ooh. Stretch it out a little bit, didn't he? Such a good truck all day long, qualified on the pole for the first time. And you saw just moments ago, the 11 got around the 99, put him two laps down now. So Ben Rhodes still limping out there, certainly not 100%. It's a good shot of Jesse Love, our Arca Championship point leader. Jesse's done a nice job here, stayed up on the top 15. He is right now the last truck on the lead lap. Would love to see a caution to stay in front of his teammate, Corey Hine. Just his second career start in the truck series. But what what he's doing in the Arkham Menard series is just phenomenal. incredible. Just phenomenal. What an awesome lead. He has nine wins already this year for the Arkham Menard series. Had a tough break today. That nine wins is crazy to That's say. That's a lot isn't of it? wins. And 17 starts, Michael. Had just his second DNF of the season earlier today. Had to watch the race from the pit box. Focus on the truck race for tonight. I have a feeling we'll see this young man full time in the truck series. I'm sure next year. Or I would, somewhere. I would think. So he's going to be somewhere for sure. He certainly deserves it. He moved by the 33 truck of Chase James to uh, to move him. Now he's ahead of the free pass spot. And or ahead James, of the, uh, still on the lead left, I'm sorry. Yeah, James is running that strategy I talked about. Just stay out there and take a chance. It didn't work, but Chase James stayed on the lead lap all the way till just now. He's going to have to pit pretty quickly, but they took that chance to try to stay up, stay in the game. And Chase Purdy was able to get by James, so now Chase again is in the free pass spot. Right now pulling really hard for Jesse Love to stay on the lead lap. Love's got a bit of a gap there. Running some fast lap times. That last lap time, he was within a couple tenths of a second of Corey Himes. 21 laps to go here at Kansas Speedway. As you see the cutoff line as they run, that's why Ben Rhodes continues doing all he can. He's in right now by eight points. Think he can do it? I think he can. I think, I think especially if they made the truck drive a little bit better, he can certainly maintain this pace. And he, you know, he, get, he has eight points to play with. That means eight positions to play with. He's running 26 now. He would have to go all the way back to 34th. But Matt obviously 
can gain some spots too and gain points. But Matt's about seven seconds behind Taylor Gray, who's one spot in front of him right now. Matt De Benedetto needs a caution. As Corey Heim just crossed the start finish line, that is the Craftsman 20 laps to go. What a night this could be for Corey Heim. Talked to Scott Zipidelli, his crew chief this week, and he just said, it's all about the win. We have been so focused. This is his place. This is his favorite racetrack. We just need to go out and win. How about the parity that we've had here this year in the truck series? Grant Enfinger has three wins. Carson Hosevar has three wins. Corey Heim has two wins. Zane Smith has two wins. What's going on with and our coming into guys, this Heather? race? They, yeah, and coming into this race, Zane Smith and his crew chief Chris Lawson really just felt like they needed a reset. Their short track program wasn't where it needed to be. So coming to this mile and a half gave them an opportunity to see where they would stack up against the rest of the playoff competitors. So this is the same truck that they ran in Nashville where they had a really good finish, a top five, and they said they should have the same good speed as we see him running here in third. But moving on. To Nick Sanchez, I spoke earlier about how confident he was coming into this race, and he said they really have had a switch since Milwaukee. That was a game changer for them. He felt like him and his team are really reading each other well and making great adjustments, the best changes they've made so far this season. And he's shown it on track today, running inside the top five the entire race. Amanda? Well, Heather, the 25 racing in that new chassis here at Kansas. He's been really happy with the truck tonight. But it is that mentality that we talked about at the beginning of the show. It is win or bust for this team. And that is definitely what it's going to be because Ben Rhodes, his team, is telling them, hey, we're in the clear. We are good. Ben wanted to know 20 laps to go if he needed to do all or nothing. And I would imagine this is going to be all. Caution is out. Oh. Caution is out for the fourth time. As you see, the 22, that's Mason Maggio. Got to believe that was a hard lick into the wall once yeah, again that tonight. Has the looks of a right front tire as well. Mason was doing a nice job inside the top 20 in that 22 truck. And I say once again because we've seen this story all day long. It's usually a result of wall contact or debris on the racetrack. There's no problem with these Goodyear tires. There's just issues with scraping that outside wall. We've seen guys just putting it on the edge or hitting some debris. That's a big hit yeah, there. Significant damage for Maggio. He's already into the wall there. Whoa. Oof. Was that Caden Honeycutt? It looked like Caden Honeycutt in the. What do you call that? Phil crab walking? Or? <laughs> Sideways, <laughs> for sure. Tough break for Mason Maggio. Oh, and we got a set of tires. Do what we? do you do? do we, nobody has any tires, do they? No, no, we, uh, I think we would have put stop our last the, set on. on the green flag stop. The green flag yeah. would stop, yeah. You're right. Just his fifth start this season. I think, I think we'll see any pit stops. Some people could put a, a, a cooler set of tires on if they want to take a chance. Yeah, these tires for most of the teams have, you know, about 20, 22 two laps on them, so. And I think you would have to put maybe the tires on you had ran during the second stage, which after the caution for the stage and probably only have about the same amount of tires. But as you mentioned, they would be cooler. But but do you want to give up the track position? No, but if you're there's only 12 trucks right now on the lead. Yeah, lap, yeah, so. that's that's not many. I mean, if you're back, if you're Stuart Friesen in eighth, Tanner Gray, Raja Karuth. What about why Matt? Not, what about Matt? Matt Benedetto? Benedetto. Why not take a chance? Yeah, see yeah. what you got. You see there the 2023 playoff cut line officially as they run right now. Grand Enfinger with the win, Majeski with the win. Advances. Corey Heim, Christian Eckes, Carson Hosevar. We announced he advanced midway through the race. Zane Smith, Nick Sanchez, and Ben Rhodes. All to the good as of now. Plenty of racing still to come, though. Stay with us from Kansas.
Welcome back to the Craftsman Truck Series live from Kansas Speedway. 13 laps to go. It's an elimination night. Two drivers will be cut. Mm. It's also a chance to win a NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series race and advance in the playoffs. And you see Corey Heim right there on point was able to drive away from Carson Hosovar after that exchange of pit stops. One driver in right now, one driver out right now. Things can still change, plenty of racing to go. Yeah, we're monitoring the point situation closely and there just isn't any way to move another driver, lock Zane Smith in. We can't do that yet because if he crashes right now, he could be out of the, out of the points. You see it there, Ben Rhodes in 99 with that ill handling truck right now. Nine points to the good over Matt De Benedetto, minus nine. Let's hear from the crew chiefs, Amanda. Standing by with Chad Kendrick, who just told me that he told Matt De Benedetto ahead of this race that I don't need this truck back. So we'll see how spicy it's going to get as we head to the end of this race. But you told uh, Matt that it's basically a win at this point. What else do you guys have up your sleeves? That's about it, you know. I, ben is doing everything he can to limp his home, and he's doing what he's got to do. So short, I, we need him to fall back four or five, and we pick up four or five. But ultimately, we need a win. Um, so we, I told TJ to tell Matt. I mean, that's pretty much it. It's do or die, and we need a win. So he, he's good enough to do it. I think the truck is okay enough to do it. It may not be as fast, but you get up front and things change, so business picks up. So we need a restart of his life right here. You can definitely feel the intensity over at the 25. Chad Kendrick was clenching his fist as I came over here. Yeah, talk about restarts now. What a wild restart we're going to have here. Pit Road is open to some of those trucks, maybe just outside the top five. Do they gamble on maybe put some cold tires on? We know they don't have any new tires left. Jack Kendrick, he sold it right there. Business is about to pick up. It's do or die, go for it. I can't wait to see what Matt Benedetto can do here. It's all or nothing. It's all on the line to advance to the round of eight. There you see everybody passing by pit road. Yeah, everybody feels like the tires they have on the trucks now are better than what they could put on. They would have to put tires on that they had already run during the race. Let's get an update on Nick Sanchez, Heather. Well, I said earlier he was having communication issues with the team and not able to let them know what he needed as far as the handling of that race truck. And again, he's still having a little bit of issues. They told him, take your radios out of the case and put them back in if that happens again. But one thing that he's having, a, having to do on his own is actually spot for himself. So the trucks around him, he said, hey, I kind of know they're there, but I'm trying to do my best just not to cause a wreck here and they said hey man you're doing a great job so keep up the good work well that's going to be a real issue on this restart when they're going to be three and four wide wow what a round one of the playoffs it's been three great races a lot of drama a lot of intensity and great race are. tracks too and michael waltrip's truck Take us around the country, Mikey. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take you from Indy up to Milwaukee, and then I'm going to run you out west a little bit to Kansas. Where are you but, going then? Oh, you watch this, Phil. We're going to go to Bristol. What about Bristol Talladega combination? And go in to the, the same round? Wow. I want to go to the beach. All right, let's, let's go, go to down Miami. To Miami. South, south Beach, a little bit south of South Beach. And then we're going to drop a trophy on this gang out in Phoenix. A lot of fun left for this season. It's been a lot of fun this year, but some more fun to come. Absolutely. Cross the line here with 10 laps to go. Corey Heim has led 32 laps tonight, but Nick Sanchez talked a lot about him. He's led the most tonight, 43 laps. You know, I guess they probably will get to choose next time by. And I talked about how Heim got the lead, slid through his pit box, backed up quickly. His team did a great stop, but he pitted one lap before Carson Hosevar. Does that one lap on his tires play out as we wind these laps down? That's how close the competition is. It could be a factor. They'll be choosing next time by. We're going to step aside one more time. 
Nine laps to go. Once we drop the green flag, stay with us. You won't want to miss this finish. Still under caution with nine laps to go. This is about to get good. Oh, it's been good. <laughs> it's about it's to get, get better. better. <laughs> it's been good. This may but be this one is... of the wildest restarts we've ever seen. I'm, and I'm not making it up, Phil. These guys will be four wide, and they're going to be pushing and shoving. You know, Phil talked about at the top of the show, guys that have raced their way in, perhaps we're going to see that tonight. Here we go. Restart once again, Corey Heim. Carson Hosevar, can Zane Smith get up there and steal it? Or Nick Sanchez, can he seal the deal? What about the block by Heim on Zane? But Zane goes high and gets the lead off two. Here comes Hosevar, going to push Zane. Look at Stewart freezing in the 52 back there. Matt DiBenedetto knows if he has a chance of advancing, he's got to get this win. He's got to seal the deal. The 25 back there in sixth right now. I can't tell you how impressive that was. There's a caution. Raja Karu through the grass. Well, we're going to see another one of those. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Producer Mark Smith got in her ear and said, do we see another caution? I said, heck yeah, we mm. see one. The answer is yes. And the 15 of Tanner Gray. What a good run it had been yeah, for Tanner top, Gray. Yeah, on the lead lap here. And there's only there's only 13 trucks on the lead lap. He was top 10 all day long. According to the scoring monitor, Jake Garcia will be the recipient of the free pass. Raja stays on the lead lap. He's got some issues, though. Look at the damage on the back of the truck ahead of him. That was Ben Rhodes. He can put some tires on. Again, they're going to be older tires, but he can put tires on that truck just in case. Ooh, Jesse Love did. And then Raja got out of the gas, I suspect, and then Tanner didn't see what was happening, and they made contact. I think that's exactly right. I think you called it exactly right. Jesse gets sideways. And big time sideways. Big time sideways. Raja sees it. He's right behind him. He backs off. Tanner doesn't see it. And it happened so quick that his spotter didn't even have time to tell him. And, and when you say doesn't see it, you can't see it. You're driving right behind another truck. You can't see over the truck. So he was just a victim of circumstances. It's another shot. Talked about Jesse Love and the one getting sideways. Oh, nice job by Daniel Dye. Did you see him just avoiding gray there off down the front straightaway? Mm -hmm. A lot of drivers did a nice job avoiding that. 
Ben Rhodes just creeping by saying, all right, let's just run a few more laps and get out of here. Tanner Gray to pit road. There's the damage on the Wendell Scott Foundation number 24 for Raja. I think Tanner has a good, a good chance of staying on the lead lap. I thought I saw that right front wheel wobbling. Was it? Yeah, like then that, something was then, broke or bent in there. That's not going to happen. They were looking at it pretty close. He also has a lot of damage on the left side as well. Yeah, I think he's got big issues. Yeah. Zane Smith second right now. Let's hear from his crew chief, Heather. Here with Chris Lawson right now, and we're talking about how brutal this restart might be. So what's the risk versus reward, and how aggressive are we going to see Zane get? Uh, I'd say max aggression, right? I mean, it's going for the win. I don't, I don't care that we still probably need to play it safe to lock ourselves into this next round. It's, it's going for a race win. We got to do it. So, I uh, expect to see that out of them. Fine. Good luck. Thank you. Max aggression. Let's do this. Who gets it, Corey Heim? The experience of Zane Smith. Well, I, what I saw from Corey Heim when he ducked low off turn four and was able to grab the lead, even though he was side by side entering turn three, that that 11 right now is hitting on all cylinders. He's going to be tough to beat. But you put Carson Hosevar in a in a uh, chance to race, win situation, <laughs> late race restart, and he can smell victory lane. Watch the aggression from the 42 truck. He knows he's locked in already. And I love Chris Lawson's philosophy. This, let's win. Let's go for the win. Now, again, he's 61 points now above the cut line as they run. The only thing could even happen to him was if Matt De Benedetto would jump up there and win this race. Then we'd have to do some math. Well, Christian Eckes is in the fourth spot, Amanda. And he's had a really good truck all day. It said he's been balanced, it's been very consistent, but he's been racing with one thing on his mind, and that is a trim to the playoff mustache that he has been just completely upset with all weekend. I verified with the team if that's been a problem. He said, man, that's all we can hear about. So uh, maybe we'll get a sight of this playoff mustache towards the end of this race. How about we don't? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he's got this clean cut baby face and he's rocking this mustache right now. But yeah. it worked for Martin Truex Jr. a few years ago with that whole team that well, grew out those beards. Oh my goodness, it was atrocious. But hey, it worked for him. You've seen some hockey teams now having you in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Those beards and missing <laughs> teeth. No I gotta, I gotta tell you, I like the commitment. I like, I like that he says, I'm gonna rock it all the way to Phoenix. And this truck has been fast enough. McAnally Hogeman racing. I hear you, Michael, but I still don't like it. <laughs> What about Stuart Friesen sneaking into the mix, too? We haven't seen anything from Stuart lately, Phil. It's been a bit of a struggle. Yeah, if anybody needs a good run at Stuart Friesen, his last four races, 27th, his best finish. Oh, We're certainly used to seeing Stuart racing up front. He's, he's back up front where he belongs right now. He's probably won about nine dirt races since he <laughs> had his last top 10 in the truck series. That's a struggle, Heather. Yes, it has been a struggle for Stuart Friesen, but so far tonight he's been happy. The only thing he's complained about is just being a little bit free in that race truck, but he did not make the playoffs. He has nothing to lose here tonight, so he's going for win number one on the season, and I believe we can expect to see Stuart Friesen mix it up here on this restart for sure. Yeah, early the best in the race, he's been. Sorry, Jamie. Early in the race, I saw him down, down passing in the grass at the start-finish line. Yeah, and it's going to be... Pretty close to NASCAR overtime here. One to go, so we'll have two shots at a getting this race finished. Choosing that's, jinx. Yeah, it's fun to say together. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. There's technically not going to be overtime. If we're going to finish at the prescribed distance if we don't have another caution flag. That's the if that I the said. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I said. Covered his bases. There, there, there's two chances <laughs> that we finish this race. One, we don't have overtime, but certainly still a possibility. These guys go down to turn one on this restart, knowing what's on the line. I don't know what to expect. How about Taylor Gray in sixth? Mm -hmm. We know he's an aggressive driver, a good driver. He could steal one here. Jesse Love into the top 10. Jake Drew. I mean, that's just, just fun seeing these names bubble up to the top 10. Yeah, Taylor had a great third place finish at Pocono a few races ago. I love the win or go home mentality, though, when we're talking about Matt Benedetto back in seventh, Zane Smith 
in the second spot. Don't think that Carson Hosevar isn't thinking the same thing, winner or go home. Even though he's already locked in to the next round, it's all about the trophies. Corey Himes now led 40 laps here tonight. Can he lead the last two? Corey Heim on the inside, Zane Smith. <laughs> this is going to be tough. Watch him fan out. They're pushing from the second row. Look at Eckes. Look at Taylor Gray. Taylor Gray in that orange and black. Number 17 up high, side by side. Corey Heim to the point. Christian Eckes. On the top of the track, the 38 is Zane Smith in the middle. Three wide for the lead. For the lead. Look Three at this. Three wide, there's contact, Corey Heim. White flag is out. How is this one going to end? Christian Eckes by a nose. Three wide guys, they're hanging on to it for this final lap. Watch Zane side draft, Corey Heim. Where will Christian go? Will he dive to the bottom? Yes. Is Christian Eck is going to steal this? Christian, oh. Zane Smith sideways, taps the wall, he hangs on to it. They're three wide behind him. Christian Eck is steals the win here at Kansas. Oh, me, what a finish. How about Matt DiBenedetto grabbing the third spot? Not going to be enough, but man, he did all he could do. He gave it his all, but Christian Eck is third win of the season that was beautiful and he I, didn't give up what about zane smith off turn four i mean that truck was crashed i love the way these truckers go at it win or go home for zane smith sideways touches the wall still brings it home fifth uh, that's one of those cases where you don't know what thanks me for that one yeah good job there Brent. Oh, there's the win and the celebration, and then there's the loss. And Matt Benedetto and the 25 gave it his all, but he has failed to advance to the round of eight. But, but I think your head held high. I totally. Mean, he charged right. To, I mean, he, he was in position to win the race and gave it all he had. And when he gets out of that truck, it's going to hurt, but he's going to have a smile on his face, I think, because he's going to say, you know, we were there. We had a shot at it. And he put on a show. That was fun to watch. I mean, he fought to the very end. 22-year-old out of Greenville, New York. Christian Eckes, fourth career win, third this season. What did you say about the playoff mustache? You said you didn't like it. Do you like it better now? <laughs> I think I think you're stuck with it for at least a few more weeks. I think we are. We're about to see the unveiling of the playoff stash. Oh, we uh, apologize for that language, but these boys are fired up, didn't lead all night. He was there, he was in the hunt. All night long, he was top five. Just made it all work at the end, and we know how wild the restarts are gonna be late, and he just executed perfectly. Gosh, the restarts are so exciting here. Zane Smith, wow, what a save. Didn't his first two wins of the season end under caution? I believe they were, he said, I just wanna win in the regular, <laughs> regular distance of the race and he did it here tonight what about his night vision it was perfect <laughs> it was perfect mikey bill McAnally smiling big somewhere i'm sure he's not far there's the checkered flag that's what it's all about playoff racing and that's the way to do it too that's the way to win them let's go here it is, the big unveil. <laughs> there it is. America, you can decide for yourself. But I that like doesn't it. matter because it's all about the win, the excitement of it. And Amanda, you're with them. Christian, what an extra special celebration here. And talking about opening up round one of this playoff for yourself, you punctuate it with a win. Walk us through the commitment of those last couple of laps. Wow. Yeah, no, that was uh, that was wild. I didn't know if I was going to win it or not. Uh, 
We had like a sixth place truck all day, but that caution coming out, I knew we have a shot at it. And uh, here we are. We haven't won in a really long time. So uh, I wanted to kind of set the tone. And uh, what a hell of a wave of round 10, uh, second, third, first. So uh, can't beat that. Proud of all these guys. We're taking a look at the replay from the end of this race. And uh, I warned Jamie and the guys about the playoff mustache. But talk about the tone of that guy. So uh, my crew guy, JR, made me shave in and trim it up this week. I didn't like it at all, but I guess I'm going to have to keep it. So yeah, just super proud of everybody. Nap Auto Care, Gates Hydraulics, uh, Adaptive One. Man, it's, uh, it's awesome to be back in victory lane for sure. Christian Ackes, your winner here in Kansas. Heather? And Matt DiBenedetto misses it by five points. You finished third. You gave it everything you had. Is there anything else you could have done differently on your end? No, I don't, I don't think so. Honestly, this team fought so hard, worked their tail off to give me a, a good looking truck and a, a good handling truck all night. So, man, we we made the most of it for sure. And just so thankful for these guys to Rackley Roofing. And we've got Kansas Land Tire and Service, who great friend Josh is a great friend of mine. Having them on board so cool. And American Racing, I've bought tons of their wheels and stuff because I bought all kinds of cars and Ready Lift. We just did a project with my truck at home with them so this is a really cool special truck i hate we missed it man it stinks we had an issue at milwaukee and it took us out of it and we could be in that next round but this team uh they deserve their to hold their their heads high for sure thanks matt that's the cross between just passion and thankfulness and sadness you know he, it was it, you could tell by his interview that he just had so many emotions going on there and that tells you how much racing means to these guys and how important it is to succeed and just push yourself forward matt de benedetto is such an emotional driver always wears his heart on his sleeve i know this one will be tough for him he knew that it was a, a steep road to hoe but he gave it his all in a great interview Coming up next, right here on FS1, the Joel Klatt Show, the Big Noon Conversation with Coach Nick Saban. That'll be good if you're up for staying up a little bit later. It's been a nice long day of racing on the channel, hasn't it? Nick's, Nick's a lot of fun. He's an emotional cat, wouldn't you say? <laughs> I'd stay up and watch a little bit of that action. Playoff leaderboard, here we go. Headed into the round of eight. Corey Heim on top with Christian Eckes, Grant Enfinger, Carson Hosevar. Remember, after this round, we're going to lose four drivers before we move on to Phoenix to decide the championship. And, and this, this Jamie, this is real. <laughs> this, this is where they are. There's no lie there. There's no lie. You know where you stand. Let's go racing. Mikey, there's going to be a line, and it's going to start at Bristol next Thursday night. Ah. <laughs> so enjoy this week. I just love Bristol, though, man. Matt Crafton's name is not on that list. He's with Heather. And Matt Crafton eliminated tonight, but you guys were behind the eight ball having to go to that backup truck, and then you had issues with getting into the wall. But just can you kind of assess your, you and your team's effort to try to make it to the next round? Our team did a great job. I mean, it all comes down uh, lap two uh, in practice when the, the nine truck wrecked. and. They did a pathetic job of cleaning it up, and, and we ran through the debris when we went back out there. They weren't in a rush in practice, but hey, I mean, it is what it is, and we got uh, the cards were dealt, and it, it folded really crappy for us, but at the end of the day, um, we had we had some speed. We missed travels right there a little bit, got on the splitter, but we weren't terrible, and just kept putting stopper in the left front and finally got it off and managed, and when it jumped sideways off too, it hadn't done that all night, and it just caught me off guard. But uh, yeah, thank these guys. They worked their butts off today just from practice wrecking that truck in practice and then uh, wrecking during the race and wrecking during the race and um, it wasn't meant to be we'll go on do it again next year Amanda by five points Ben Rhodes is going to be racing in round two of this playoff and Ben it was not pretty how hard of a drive was that for you yeah we were edgy all day long ever since we unloaded and uh, we kind of were predicting that it was going to come to us in the race and it kind of went the opposite way. I usually judge like a scale of like zero to five for the truck and we were about a four loose at one point. So uh, I got to do some research and talk to the guys if we ended up having a tire going down that caused me getting the wall or if it was just a mistake on myself. But mixed emotions tonight for this Kubota Ford F-150 team, you know, the expectation is to make it to the next round. So just meeting the, expecta the expectation isn't necessarily a cause for celebration. 
So, I mean, we're happy to advance, but at the same time, we've got to smooth out some rough edges and make sure that we're, you know, bringing, bringing, I don't know, less mistakes and faster, more comfortable trucks. Well, Jamie, he'll get his Reese wish. He will race at Talladega. They did all they had to do just to make it to the next round. And speaking of the round of eight, we've got Bristol coming up next Thursday, then Talladega, then Homestead. So that's a quite quite the difference of three different races. What there. a great group of racetracks for one round. And you see the schedule for next Thursday. Trucks and ARCA racing from Bristol. We've got trucks qualifying 4 p.m. Eastern, the ARCA Menard Series, 6 p.m followed by Trucks Race Day and the Trucks Series Race. First round of, first race of the round of eight coming up at nine Eastern. And what a day it's been, gentlemen. I'm telling you, Jamie, that was as good of a truck race as you could hope for. What a dramatic finish, what action we saw all night long. And guess what's next? Bristol, baby. <laughs> it's gonna be a great night there as well. 134 laps, three drivers led at least 32 laps, and none of them won the race. <laughs> and somebody raced their way in that was on, on the outside looking in, and that was Ben Rhodes. Congratulations. Christian Eckes picks up the big win tonight for Phil Parsons, Trevor, Michael Waltrip, Jamie Little. Thank you for being with us. Joel Klatt Show is next.